Grace and peace to you from Grace and Peace to You Nuggets here in Lexington, Virginia. I hope you're having a great Sunday. I hope you have a good week. If not, understand. That we, uh, you know, I've been there, done that, where you've had some weeks that you just wish you could repeat or just throw away. But wherever you're at, I pray that God's Word speaks to you where you're at. Whether you've had a good week or a bad week or just want to wish that week away. And I pray that this upcoming week will be a week where God's Word changes your reality. Lord, help us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, I want you to know that the messages that I bring forth are usually due to 99.9% of the time are because of what God is doing in my life that I want to share with you all the lessons that I'm learning. This is not a, a downward approach. It's a approach that God is working through me and I'm as it processes uh, I'm able to share with you and um, I pray that God's word not my word but God's word richly touches you in the way that it's meant to be so you've heard the expression the definition of insanity is doing the same thing again expecting different results let's say that again and the definition of insanity common definition is doing the same thing over and over again expecting different results each time so that's what we do in life a lot and uh, recently I did the same thing again expecting different results same results same thing so I think we all have a touch of insanity don't we question is today what are you doing over and over again expecting different results when you're getting the same thing or maybe you've lulled yourself into believing that somehow this is what you're doing is actually life and I, I hope that you're not so deceived I know we as human beings are prone to deceive ourselves into thinking that our so-called versions of life are really what life is. But I, I pray today that uh, you along with I will stop settling for less than best, less than God's best, and that we will experience life and life to the fullest. And we will stop doing the things that keep producing the same results. And we would stop being insane. That we would really experience the Zoe life that God provides, which is life brimming over. Life to the full. So I'm going to give you two pictures of people who um, one was confronted with changing something that he was doing instead of doing the same thing and he didn't change and then another one was presented an opportunity to reverse his routine and he definitely took a hold of the opportunity and as a result there was a life change so the first is when Jesus meets the rich young ruler or the rich young ruler meets Jesus. And it's found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I'm going to read you the Matthew version and uh, talk to you about um, how the others uh, pointed out a certain word that I thought was striking. So Matthew 19, 16 through 22 just then someone came up and asked Jesus teacher what good must I do to have eternal life why do you ask me about what is good 
Jesus said to him, There is only one who is good. If you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. Which ones? He asked Jesus. Jesus answered, Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother and love your neighbor as yourself. I have kept all these, the young man told him. What do I still lack? If you want to be perfect, Jesus said to him, go sell your belongings and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard that command, he went away grieving because he had many possessions. Another version said, another uh, look at it as well, in one of the other synoptic gospels, is that he was stunned. Not only was he grieving, but he was stunned, shocked. So he went away because he had many possessions. You know, the... One of the, I've always thought it fascinating, Jesus left out in the list of do nots. He left out, do not put any God before the one true God. And, but he didn't leave it out because he basically exposed this young rich ruler for having the God of wealth the God of possessions, the God of comfort in this life, the God of having, verse in heaven not, the God of luxury, the God of greed. This is what this young rich ruler was all about. He knew there must have been more to life, but he wanted to cling on to that which he had always clinged on to and get different results. He couldn't let go. He wanted, he knew there was more, but he couldn't do it because he wanted to continue in his insanity of grasping on to this prestige, this power, this everything that he had. So he went away grieving, stunned, because he had many possessions. He continued his routine of insanity, doing the same thing. Even though he had an inclination that there was more. Is that where you're at? I'm not talking about if you have a lot of money. I'm just wondering if you're like me and you've you know you there's this one thing that you just keep going after and it doesn't provide life at all it just sucks you dry but you you think that somehow it's the end all be all and it's what will make you happy what will give you true joy and it's it doesn't what is that one thing and here's the next story Jesus shares his encounter with a man named Zacchaeus in Luke 19. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. There was a man named Zacchaeus who was a rich tax collector. Who was, excuse me, was a chief tax collector and he was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but he was not able because of the crowd, since he was a short man. Tax collectors were allowed to add to their pocket by the Roman government. They were seen as sellouts, and this is to the Roman oppressors at at the time who occupied the home of the Hebrews the Jews the running ahead 
He was unable to see the, Jesus because of the crowd since he was a short man. So running ahead, he climbed up a sycamore tree to see Jesus since he was about to pass that way. He looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down because today I must stay at your house. So he quickly came down and welcomed him joyfully. All who saw it began to complain. He's gone to be to lodge with a sinful man. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, "Look, I'll give you half my I'll give my, half my possessions to the poor, Lord, and if I have extorted anything from anyone, I'll pay back four times as much." Today, salvation has come to this to this house Jesus said, told him because he too was a son of Abraham for the son of man has come to seek and to save the lost so here's a chief tax collector basically robbing the people for the Roman government in his own purse and something about Jesus gets to him and he stops doing his routine. He completely has stopped in his tracks. And he reverses. He stops doing the same old thing. He stops living this insane life. He stops living the cushion life. He stops living the pursuit of his particular lifestyle at the time. Because he is enamored by Jesus and he wants to experience life and life to the fullest. And this change brings about positive repercussions to those around him. He didn't cling on anymore to this great wealth, he released it. What are you clinging on today? Perhaps you've come across this message and maybe you've listened to others and this Jesus sounds incredible to you and you want more, but you don't want to give up your old routines. You don't want to get out of your particular crowd and look to see Jesus for who he really is. I'm not talking about the Americanized Jesus. I'm not talking about the politicized Jesus. I'm talking about the real Jesus. Maybe you too want to go climb a tree and see above the crowd. And just maybe you too will find the life that you've always been looking for. And stop this routine of insanity doing the same thing over and over expecting different results Zacchaeus stopped the cycle and not only did the results benefit him but they benefited those around him thanks be to the word of the Lord I hope you have a great rest of your day grace and peace to you from grace and peace to you nuggets